Okay, let's see if you can do this problem here. So we have the square root of x cubed plus x squared minus the square root of 4 plus 4x. And what I'd like you to do is to simplify this problem. And it can be simplified. And if you could do this problem, that's a very good indication that you're definitely on the right track in your algebra course. You're probably looking at getting a nice grade at the end of your course, which is always awesome. And I would say that uh, this is probably uh, definitely like at the Algebra 1, Algebra 2 level, maybe college algebra, intermediate algebra. This is beyond pre-algebra, but if you're taking like a basic algebra course or pre-algebra, don't leave. You're going to learn something uh, because you will be taking this information. You might be, you know, dabbling with this uh, topic as well. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. But one thing I want to stress to you is um, that this problem, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, challenging, all right? Let's, let's just kind of think about something for a second. So when a teacher gives you homework, they'll give you like basic problems, then they'll give you some medium problems, and then they'll give you some advanced problems. It's like a menu, right? You get like the mild and then the spicy type of stuff, you know, and then you know, no, no hot sauce at all. You think of it in that way, right? So what happens is a lot of students will uh, they'll do like the basic problems. They'll be like, yeah, I could do all these basic problems and they'll do all the easy problems and they get a false sense of confidence. They'll be like, I could do all of these. I must be good to go. So I, I'm just going to move on. All right? I'm not going to deal with these guys because I've already confirmed to myself that because I could do the easy problems, I you know, know the topic well. That's not the case. All right, You get yourself in trouble that way. You have to challenge yourself with the more, you know, um, you know, challenging problems, okay, the more advanced problems. So your teacher knows what they're doing. They're going to give you a wide variety of problems. So yes, start with the basic stuff, but move on, you know, incrementally. But if you don't do these more challenging problems, you're not going to truly, you know, develop, uh, you know, the, the strength in that particular skill, okay? So this problem, again, I would classify this as like a medium, uh, maybe kind of advanced level problem. Definitely not a basic problem. These are not uh, in, you know, my opinion. So we're going to get to this in just one second. And uh, before we do, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed uh, what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that uh, if you're interested. Find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I offer 100 plus different math courses. I have all the big courses like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Pre-Algebra, uh, Geometry, College Algebra. I'm going to be launching Pre-Calculus here soon. But I have many, many uh, specialty courses, uh, a lot in the area of test preparation. So for those of you who are studying for a specific type of test, like let's say the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, teacher certification, Alex, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, you, you kind of see the drift here, right? Nursing entrance exam. There's a lot of people studying mathematics outside of a course. They're not taking college algebra. They're, they're studying math for a particular reason, you know, a critical test that will have an impact on our life. So I offer very specific uh, math courses uh, for these tests. Of course, this has taken me years to develop uh, a lot of research. So um, if you, you know, are, are one of these people that have this kind of need, check out my course catalog. I should have your exam. If I don't, drop me a line in there. I'll give you some guidance on what to do, or I'll, you know, look into developing a course for you. Now, I also help a lot of those that are out there that are doing independent study, like homeschoolers, and obviously those of you out there that are in, like, let's say, a college algebra or algebra two, but you just, you know, for whatever reason, need some additional help, uh, more instruction, and you like the way I teach. So, yes, my program can definitely help you out. But the first thing you got to do to help yourself learn math, and I assume that that's what you're watching this video for, you want to get better at math, is just pay attention to what I'm going to say here. This is the golden rule of math, right? It's like a, a law of the universe, all right? And that is over decades of teaching math, this is what I've seen, okay? Those students who take great math notes almost always end up like this at the end of the year. They do very, very well. And those students who don't take great math notes, just they don't think it's important, right? They don't want to do the work. You know, maybe their best friend's in there and they take better notes than they do. Maybe they like to do their homework for other classes when, you know, they're in math class. Or maybe they have their cell phone or just got to keep up with the social media. Listen, I get it. I was a student 
uh, one time once. And thank goodness there was no cell phones around when I was going to uh, school uh, back in the good old days, because if they were, I would be completely distracted. So, you know, great notes is evidence of you remaining focused and engaged. It's work, okay? I know it's hard to stay focused and engaged, but if you concentrate on taking notes, then you are forcing yourself into an activity that is keeping you focused, right? You see how that works? And, you know, if you do that, okay, you are going to do very well in math, right? You're going to end up looking like this person over here, and you're going to be like, oh, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. And look, you don't want to be at the end of the year. You don't want to have regret. You don't want to see your grade and be like that person, okay? Because they're going to be like, what happened? What happened? Well, you know, they know what happened. Deep down inside, they know they didn't work as hard. Now, I'm not saying that you're always going to do 100% perfect, and there's not going to be challenges even if you take great math notes, uh, but that is the foundation, okay? You're going to do very, very well, okay, in, in math if you if you start with your math notes and you just focus on being proactive and working hard, okay? All right, but in the meantime, as you improve in your math notes, uh, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Now, I'm going to solve the problem here, but I'm going to first um, kind of highlight, you know, things that you need to be thinking about if you want to challenge yourself. So uh, we have a square root of something, okay? Uh, being There's a difference. We're going to subtract away from the square root of something else. So anytime you're facing a problem like this, or any kind of you know challenging problem, always distill you know it down to its more its most basic uh, concepts. All right. So in other words, you're saying okay, you've got the square root of something, subtract from the square root of something else. So we need to understand uh, how to you know how does basically subtracting square roots work? Or when can I do this? All right. So you know to help you uh, with that. You know, make up an easy example problem. So you'd be like, okay, well, how does, you know, if I had this problem, you know, what can I do? Right? Could I, you know, how do I do this? Because if you can't do this, then you're definitely not going to be able to do this. So anytime you're faced with something that's more complicated than what you're doing, always make, uh, revert back to something easier. Okay. Like just make up something and ask yourself, do I know how to do this? And if you don't, go look into your notes, go, you know, make sure you understand the major concepts, and then you could tackle, you know, uh, obviously this uh, problem, okay? Now, this problem is obviously going to require you to understand when we can subtract square roots, right? So that's a, a clear skill that we're going to need. And you're also going to need to know how to factor, okay? Factoring is one of the most critical skills uh, in algebra. This is just a must know, okay? Everything is going to get better. It's just like note taking. If you know how to factor, yeah, you, it's, you know, your life will be much better in mathematics. If you don't, you're going to, you're going to struggle, okay? Uh, so I'm just telling you right now, I have a lot of videos on factoring in my um, algebra, algebra two, pre-algebra playlist. So uh, you could check all those out. But if you really want to master this stuff, then you want to check out one of my courses, like my algebra course. Uh, but you got to know how to factor. So you, factoring you're gonna, is going to be involved in this problem. So you need to know how to factor. Okay, and not too complicated either. It's not crazy factoring in this particular problem. And you're going to need to know how to handle this situation. Right. So I'm giving you a little bit of an overview of the skills that you're going to need, kind of a clue without giving away how to do this problem, because I'm going to show you the solution right now. And if you don't want to see it, go ahead and pause the video and keep working on it. But I'm going to go ahead and solve this right now. Okay, so here it is. We want to simplify this problem. And let's just go through it step by step. Let's start up here. So here's the problem, okay? So again, what I said was, when you're starting a problem, uh, you know, the factoring is going to be involved. One of the best things you can do for yourself in mathematics outside of, you know, first understanding, uh, you know, the basic principles like we talked about right here, okay? Uh, but to get a problem going, oftentimes the best thing in algebra to do is to start factoring. Just factoring oftentimes will help you see the next step. You might be like, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Well, you can see some things here are factorable. Okay, so start factoring out. So we have x cubed plus x squared. 
Here I can factor out an x squared, okay? And I'm left with an x plus 1, okay? Now, if you don't know how I did that, uh, check out some of my factoring videos. Uh, this is the greatest common factor. Check out uh, my GCF video, factoring G the GCF out uh, in my algebra playlist on my channel, okay? Now, over here, I can factor uh, out a 4, and I'm left with 1 plus x. Now, x plus 1 and 1 plus x, all right, right here, x plus 1 and 1 plus x are the same thing algebraically, okay? So this is x plus 1. I could write it as x, this 1 plus x as x plus 1 and vice versa. So these are equivalent. You need to understand that, okay? So now I have two things that are equivalent. All right, interesting, okay? So let's keep that in mind. But now I need to kind of like think to myself, well, what else can I do here? I have an x squared and I have a 4, all right, x squared, and I have a 4. One thing that you might notice that these are perfect squares, okay? The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4, of course, is plus or minus 2, okay? But what can I do here? Well, again, you need to know about, you know, uh, various more basic concept concepts involving radicals, right? Now, I'm not going to be teaching you every single thing you need to know here, uh, in this video, but basically the main idea is this. If I have the square root of 10, that's equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. I can I can break away the factors of a number into two independent square roots. So thinking in those terms, I'm like, hmm, okay, let's break this up as the square root of x squared times the square root of x plus 1. All right, you got to see how that is equivalent to this. Minus, and notice I'm using brackets now. I'm using grouping symbols because, you know, uh, that's you, these are like optional things you could do just to keep your problem organized. So I'm going to break this up. I have the square root of 4 times the square root of x plus 1. Okay, now I'm doing that because I know I have these x plus 1s in common. So let's just keep uh, going here. Okay, now I have the square root of x squared is going to be equal to x. Okay, that's going to be multiplied by the square root of x plus 1. Okay, because I can't really simplify this square root of x plus 1. I'm just writing it there. Minus the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, and then I have the square root of x plus 1. Now I have these two things in common. Right? You've got to be able to see this. I can factor out this x plus 1, okay, like so. All right, that's the GCF. This is a greatest common factor or a common factor. I could factor this out, and I'm left with x minus 2. So if I had the square root of x plus 1, and I use the distributive property, and multiply back in, I would get this scenario right here. So this is the answer, okay? And if you got that answer, oh boy, I tell you, you are like awesome. I would just be like, yay, I am awesome. Matter of fact, I might just tell you to just take the rest of the year off, um, here's your A+, plus. go and take your cell phone, go have a great time. You are just too good uh, to be in my classroom to learn the rest of this course material. Now, obviously, uh, listen, you got a lot more to learn, but if you got this right, mm, that's very, very good, okay? Because what did you show? Well, you showed that you have factoring skills, that you understand radicals, um, you know, and you're able to manage a, a problem like this, okay? So in algebra, you know, everything ties into one another. Everything's, you know, step by step by step. And there's so much to learn. Okay. That's why you got to take notes, right? You got to take notes. You got to, you know, just can't rely on your memory. All right. And uh, nobody needs to look like this at the end of the school year, or the end of their, you know, course. Okay. This right here, these people who, you know, struggle. Okay. Uh, yeah. Things are difficult. It really comes down to your management of the course. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on in your life. I get that. Okay. But math is serious business. If you're going to take a math course, then you got to, you know, try to take it, you know, uh, correctly. Okay. You don't, you know, don't take a math course if you're not ready for it because, you know, often, especially a course like algebra, because it's just too much information. But in the meantime, you can use, you know, uh, my videos and my whole the objective, you know, when I make these videos is to help you out. Okay. To get you, to learn these concepts, teach you in a, in a clear and understandable uh, way, in a way that you like, you know. And if you do like my teaching style and if you enjoyed this video, please consider smashing the like button. That would definitely help uh, me out. And please consider subscribing. 
Um, been on YouTube for a long time. Have hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, organized from basic to advanced math on my channel, all there for you. But if you want my best uh, help, uh, obviously you can check out my math help program and my notes. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.